Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we will see another episode related to how to create a Simulink compatible control library. We have seen previously these other videos, LD Spice number 11, 12, 13 and 14 about how to create different components for our control library. Today we will see first an introduction and then we will show how to implement new components. We will see an alternative implementation for the integrator, then an alternative implementation for the differentiator. We will show how to implement a low pass filter for our control library. And then we will also explain how to create a second order system for our library. Finally, we will be showing several examples in LTS Spice to verify the behavior of these components. These are the components that we are going to implement today. We have first the integrator implemented with the LTSPICE built-in function IDT. Then we are going to implement an integrator with a reset input. We will implement then a differentiator using the LTSPICE built-in function DDT. And then using these components, we will show how to implement a low pass filter and finally a second order system. In a previous episode we saw how to implement an integrator. We used uh, this symbol here and we implemented the integrator using an inductor. So the current through the inductor is going to be the integral of the voltage that we are applying to the inductor. We have to use this series resistance to avoid a um, voltage loop across the inductor and then in this way we can implement this expression here which corresponds to the integrator. However, I have seen that this implementation works well in most applications but when we have to consider initial conditions it is not a good implementation due to the effect of the series resistance, the output of the integrator is not going to be accurate enough. So we have an alternative implementation that we are going to see today. So we are going to use this other symbol with the function IDT. This function is a built-in function of LTSPICE that we can use to do the integral of a waveform very easily just using this voltage source here. We use directly the function IDT applied to the input voltage and we can also provide here the initial condition directly for the output voltage. So the implementation is as easy as we can see here. We only have to implement here this voltage source. I have also included this other line here which corresponds to an input impedance here at the input of 10 mega ohms. And this is because we want to avoid a um, warning that we can see in the log file of LDSPICE. So if we use this resistance here at the input, then we are not going to see this message here in the log file that says that the empty pin current is going to be ignored. In the last version of the control library, I have also included these resistances in all the components that require them in order to avoid these messages in the log file. And then taking advantage of this function IDT, we can also provide an input in our integrator in order to do the reset of the output to the initial condition at any time. For this, we are going to implement this integrator like this. We are using the IDT function apply to the input voltage, we provide here the initial condition and then with this other input, the reset input, if this input is zero, 
the integrator is going to operate normally, but if this input is different from zero, then the output voltage is going to be reset to the initial condition. So we have here the implementation. We are adding also these two resistances to avoid this message in the log file. And with this, we have ready this new component for future applications. Here we can see a test of this integrator with the reset input. So the initial condition is zero. We are applying five volts at the input. So we can see here on the right the input voltage. Here at the bottom we can see the output voltage, so it's increasing linearly. And then at a given instant we are applying this reset pulse. So we can see how the output voltage goes to the initial condition. And after the pulse, the integrator continues the operation again. In the case of the differentiator, we saw this implementation before using a capacitor. So the current through the capacitor is going to be the derivative of the voltage, selecting a capacitance equal to 1. But again, we can do also an alternative implementation using the DDT function that is already implemented in LTS PICE. So we are going to have also in our control library this other symbol to implement the differentiator using this function. And here we have again the description for this new component. Up to now, we have used the integrator and the differentiator only in these two components of our library, the PI compensator and the PID compensator. In the PI compensator, we used the integrator here. So if we want to use this new integrator using the IDT function, we only have to substitute here the component corresponding to the integrator before was integ, now it's going to be IDT. And in the case of the PID compensator, we use this component for the differentiator, d over dt, and this other for the integrator. So we only have to substitute here these two components by idt and ddt. I have also done this in the new version of our control library that is available as usual from my website. And now we are going to see how to implement another component for our Simulink compatible control library, which corresponds to a first order low pass filter. So we know that this element has a response as shown here. We have a DC gain K and an angular cutoff frequency, omega zero, that can be expressed also like this using the, the frequency F0 in Hertz. And from this expression, it's very easy to obtain the differential equation that corresponds to the response of this element, which is shown here. And we have also an initial condition, which is the output voltage at instant t equal to zero. We can express also this differential equation as shown here, and then we can implement the solving of this differential equation by using this diagram that we have here at the bottom. We have here the derivative of the output voltage in time. We use an integrator to obtain the output voltage. We have here the initial condition in this device. At this point, we have K times the input voltage. We subtract from it V0 multiply by omega zero, and then we have again the derivative of the output voltage. This is very easy to implement in LTS PICE, so we are going to see in the next slide how we can do this implementation. So here we can see the implementation. This is our symbol for our device with the three parameters, the DC gain, the cutoff angular frequency, and the initial condition. 
here is the same implementation as we have seen in the previous slide and here is the description so now let's do a couple of simulations to verify the operation of this new component so here we have an example of simulation we have an input voltage of 10 volts our component has a DC gain of 2 the cutoff frequency is 1 kHz, as we can see here, and the initial condition is 0. So we can run the simulation, and then we can see how we have the output of voltage as expected, which is an exponential evolution of the output voltage. We can, for example, change here the initial condition and for example say initial condition equal to 5 volts and then run again the simulation so we can see how now we are starting from 5 volts so it's operating well the good thing of these components implemented in this way is that they can be used for both transient simulations and small signal simulations. For example, now we can go here and select in advanced an AC amplitude of 1 volt and then we can go and do an AC analysis in a small signal, so we can select here decade, number of points, for example 100, starting from 1 Hz until 1 MHz. And then we can run the simulation and we can see also the output voltage as expected and this is the gain and this is the phase of the output voltage. This is another example of operation in the time domain. So here we have a square waveform of 100 kilohertz and we are using our low pass filter to obtain at the output the average value of the square waveform. So we can run the simulation and then we can see here the input voltage in green and the output voltage in blue. So we are getting here at the average value of the input voltage, which is around 5 volts. And in a similar way, we can implement any other system. Here we have the second order system. As we know, this is the expression in the Laplace domain. We have the DC gain, K, the natural frequency, omega zero, and the damping factor, Xi. So from this expression here, we can obtain again the differential equation, as we can see in this expression. And we can write this differential equation like this. So we can start at a given point. Here we have the second derivative of the output voltage in time. We integrate it and we get the first derivative. We integrate again and then we get the output voltage. And then we perform this operation here. We have the input voltage. We multiply by K. We subtract the first derivative of the output voltage times this factor twice she over omega zero and also we subtract the output voltage multiply by omega zero squared and then we send this signal into the integrator again and also we have the possibility of selecting any value for the initial conditions which in this case are the initial value of the first derivative of the output voltage VO dot that we can select here in this integrator and the initial value of the output voltage that we can select in this other integrator. This is the implementation in LTSPICE. Here we have our component with the different parameters. Here is the drawing that we have seen in the previous slide. 
and this is the description for this component. So let's do a couple of simulation to test the operation of this new component. For example, here we have a simulation in time. We are going to see the transient response when we apply a step voltage of 10 volts to our component here, our second order system with these values of the parameters. So we can run the simulation. And then here we can see the output voltage in blue, the input voltage in green. So we can see also how it is starting from the initial condition of 5 volts and the response is that of a second order system. Now we can also do a small signal analysis by selecting here an AC amplitude of 1 volt and then we can run a AC simulation. So we can select here decade, number of points 100, start frequency 1, stop frequency 1 megahertz. So we can now run the simulation and see also the response. This corresponds to the gain of the output voltage and this other here corresponds to the phase of the output voltage. Well, this is all today. We have developed some more components for our control library. I hope that they are going to be useful for you in the future. As usual, you can find the last version of the control library from my website. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.